Hello everyone, this is Jackie. Today's uh, sequence is going to be for the liver. Those of you who don't know me, we did the first, first sequence that we did was for the spleen, since the spleen is the earth. The second one was the kidneys, the third one was the lungs, and now we're going into the liver sequence. Um, what's interesting is that we're coming up to a full moon. Uh, today is, oh, forgetting my days at the moment, but we're coming up to a full moon on Tuesday. Today is Sunday. And the liver sequence is actually a great sequence to do in the lead up to a full moon. Um, depending on where the full moon is also, uh, you can do a liver sequence. It's, liver sequence is a wonderful sequence if you're pre-menstrual, menstrual, suffering from perimenopause or menopause, any symptoms involved in um, your menstrual cycle. Uh, the liver sequence is also a wonderful sequence to do if you're feeling angry, frustrated, like you want to murder people, you, you're pissed off at everyone, um, you, you're getting bouts of rage, also if you're having problems sleeping because uh, the liver and the part of the organ to the liver which is the gallbladder, they are known as the wood element and the wood element as far as the Chinese clock goes, happens from 11 p.m. to 3 a.m. So from 11 p.m. to 1 a.m. is your gallbladder time, 1 a.m. to 3 a.m. is your liver time. Also, the season for the liver is spring. So in the UAE, where we've entered spring, we enter the spring equinox on March the 21st. Um, also, the liver, the liver is where the lower down TN is. So if I look my liver's on my right side and it occupies, uh, it's the physically, well, physically the second largest organ in the body. The skin is the largest organ in the body. However, the largest sensory organ in the body is the fascia and the liver controls the fascia and it controls the muscles. So we have our liver here, just on the right side, and then the gallbladder, which is a small organ and it sits underneath the liver. Um, whenever we do a liver sequence, we can feel the heat rising up. So while kidney energy drops down, liver energy rises up. So you have liver one here where your thumb toe is, just there where the thumb toe is, and then it ends obviously where the liver is at, at liver 14 but the energy keeps on rising. So if I get angry or if I get hot and bothered, if I get irritated, if I get frustrated, then the liver will start to heat up. If I'm exploding in energy, obviously the heat will rise quite quickly. Um, this is why we get headaches, migraines, the gallbladder channel zigzags along the head. For the simple fact that if I get a headache or a migraine from just sheer frustration, it rises up and I've got all this gallbladder energy up here. I have gallbladder one here, Sandow one here, just at the tip of the eyebrow, liver one here. So where the liver channel begins, you have always, you have where a channel begins, its partner organ will end. Where its partner organ ends, the primary organ will begin. So it's, it's a way of allowing as far as energy works, allowing energy to keep flowing up and down and circulating. So when we work the liver, we're looking at our lower dantian because obviously physically that's where it sits and it is in the lower dantian. And what the lower dantian represents is all about how we store energy, leak energy, steal energy, absorb energy, conserve energy, and liver if we work the liver and we really stimulate and honour the liver, we know how to have free flow of energy. So the liver three, which is a point on your foot, that allows free flow of energy in the lower body. So what we want to do is we want to find ways to move our energy so that it's not out of control, which then can cause the excess heat and then can cause the aggression. Wind um, is also an imbalance of, of liver energy. So what we're going to do today is we're going to do this beautiful sequence. So just to uh, remind you that this is a sequence that you can do any time um, that you want. However, it's a really nice sequence to do, obviously, when you're feeling these states of anger. 
So as usual, we always start with waterfall. So I'm going to come and lie down onto my back. And just to remind you, your feet are opposite ends of your mat. What you will do is you will place, if you want to use the lower block, you will place the block underneath your sacrum and you will raise your legs and your arms are above your head, your chin is towards the chest, opening up front and back of the lungs and the heart. So this will stimulate your liver. If I had the middle block, this would stimulate my kidneys and my spleen. If I did the highest block, this would definitely stimulate my heart and my lungs, but naturally you can see how high I'm coming, I've gone. So I'm stimulating the liver, kidneys and spleen, heart and lungs. We're going to look at the relationship that our liver has with our lungs. So after seven minutes, the alarm will go off. I will remove the block. I will release upper, middle, lower back, draw the knees together, lie here for a few breaths, a few minutes, roll over to my right side. So this is a pose that I am going to do for seven minutes. Always remember that you would do waterfall pose to filter the kidney's blood, to regenerate and create fresh storage of blood for the liver, to allow the spleen to transform blood, to allow the lungs to distribute blood, to allow the heart to circulate blood. So it really is an important pose to do as your first pose. It allows water to flow easily and effortlessly. Everything in yin is about how energy is moving, whether it's stagnant, whether it's stuck, whether it's moving freely, whether it's out of control. So if you're doing the yin, please bear in mind that the waterfall needs to be your first pose. However, if you're in your first or your third day of your menstrual cycle, you would do your waterfall pose against the wall. So if I did this pose, and I was in my menstrual cycle, then naturally I would do waterfall against the wall. If I had severe symptoms of perimenopause or menopause, and I can see that my hormones are fluctuating, I would bring that up, the waterfall, up to about 10 to 15 minutes. This will help just get that free flow of energy through the legs. It will help also restore the stagnant blood that's in the liver. It's very important. So naturally, because this is a liver sequence, I am going to do my reclining butterfly. Of course, we can never do enough of reclining butterfly. So I'm grabbing my bolster. Now, now, once again, to remind those who haven't done the first three sequences or haven't done a class with me before. So if I was to do reclining butterfly using the bolster, I can grab or cushion anything I have in the house. This version of my reclining butterfly allows me to make that connection that my liver has with my lungs and my gallbladder has with my heart. So if I have so much anger and aggression and frustration, if, if I have that there in the liver, liver energy travels up. So obviously it's going to travel up and go via my lungs and via my heart. I don't want it to then get stuck here, right? Because when you get angry, your chest gets really, really hot and your face gets really hot. And that actually kind of stagnates the blood and what it does is it's, it's circulation of blood for the heart and distribution of blood for the lungs gets impaired. So I will hold this pose for seven minutes. My other option of doing my reclining butterfly of course, is I can do it without the bolster. Obviously, you can see if I use the bolster, I'm elevating my lungs and heart. So if I didn't have the bolster, I could just come down and lie on my back. The soles of my feet are as close to each other as possible. I can have my arms wide. I can have my palms in prayer above my crown. Or I can grab opposite ends of my elbows. That's seven minutes. Then I will roll over to my right side. 
I decided what I was going to do is I was going to create today the sequence where we're doing a few poses on the right side and a few poses on the, the left side rather than going right, left, right, left, right, left. The reason I've decided to do that today is because based on what's going on in the world, there's a lot of frustration going on with people, rightly so, a lot of anger, even uh, outbursts of rage, which is a gallbladder imbalance. And we have to consider that this anger and this frustration, if it's not channeled properly, then it can become our new habit. We don't want this to become our, our new story. When we think about the liver, we think that the liver, or we, we recognize that the liver controls fascia, which is our life story. It controls our muscles, it controls our tendons and our ligaments. The gallbladder is responsible for our tendons and our ligaments. So you can imagine if I'm constantly feeling frustrated, or I'm feeling angry, or I have my bursts of rage, or, 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 or bouts of rage, even if I feel like um, how I feel is justified, automatically that's going to affect my muscles. They're going to contract, they're going to get really, really tight. I'm going to tear a ligament without even doing any practice of any kind. So we need to consider what is happening to our body while we're going through these intense states of emotion and this incredibly um, intense time in the world and with each other. Hopefully, if we do this beautiful practice, we can at least be aware how much we're impacting our body through our emotions. So what I decided we would do, and remember, I'll give you options if you don't have a bolster. So the first one that we're going to do, is so we're going to do upright swan. So what you do is you place your right foot to the edge of the left mat. And then you're going to bring the knees so they rest on your bolster. So it looks like a half a square shape. Now with your back leg, your left leg, if I place my left leg directly underneath my groin or underneath, say, where the, the hip bone is, it means I have the tightness in the groin area or sciatic nerve pain. If I then place my left leg the op on the left side of the mat, the opposite end of the mat, it means I have tightness here in my pelvis, in my hips, in my sacrum. So decide which one you feel is tighter. Now, if, if you're fine either way with what is going on with your body, then maybe look at it from an energetic point of view. So if I place my leg where the groin is, where the sciatic nerve is, it's because I'm feeling like I have no power or control over all areas of my life or particular areas of my life. If say I'm placing my left leg, the opposite end of the mat, so there's more space in my pelvis, more space in my hips, more space in my liver, in my sacrum, then I'm feeling lots of anger and lots of aggression. Now with my arms, I want my shoulders to be at shoulder height and my wrists are facing forward. And this is me looking at the connection between my liver and my lungs, and my gallbladder, and my heart. So I will do this pose for three minutes. Then what I will do is I will grab a block, I will grab my eye pillow, and then I'm going to fold forward. So the first one was upright swan. I will fold forward into my sleeping swan, and I'm going to place an eye pillow here. I could go lower if I wanted, palms then face up. Alarm will go off. So my upright swan is three minutes, my sleeping swan is five minutes. So this is a different version of swan. When the alarm goes off, I'm going to walk my foot, my right foot over to the right side and I'm going to release it. So then my next pose, so I've done upright swan for three minutes, I've done sleeping swan for five minutes. I'm going to come here and I'm going to do half butterfly. So I'm still using my right side. So my left leg is straight, my right foot 
is flexed. I want to protect the ligaments around my knee and I'm going to place my right foot inside. Now what I can do, I have a few options here. So I come onto the pads of my fingers and I walk the pads forward and I can drop my forehead onto my knee. My other option of course is that I can place my arms inside this left leg. So I will do this, I will drop my forehead here. The other option of course is that I do a more restorative version. So my restorative version would be, so my right leg which is bent, I'm bending the right arm, I'm placing the left palm face upward and then I'm dropping my forehead onto the bolster. Alarm will go off and I'll slowly come up. I'm still going to use my right side. I've decided today we're going to do like a long version of a sequence for the right side and then a long version of a sequence for the left side. So I've done upright swan, sleeping swan, half butterfly. Half butterfly I've done for five minutes. And now I'm going to do square pose. So square pose, what I want to do is I'm going to bring my right foot to the edge of the left mat and I'm going to check that my leg is like a square. And then I'm going to tuck that left leg underneath. Both feet are flexed. So the most important thing is the outer leg, which in this case happens to be the right leg. I will grab this block, I will place this eye pillow here, and then I'm going to fold forward. Alarm will go off, I'll slowly come up and I will release my feet like this. So this one will help me not aggravate what I'm actually trying to release. So I've done my upright swan, my sleeping swan, my half butterfly, my square pose. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do what is known a square swan before I go into my twist. So basically if I look at my, the position of my legs, I have my right leg, it's like a square. So my ankle is in line with my knee, my knee is in line with my hip. When I look at my back leg, my ankle is in line with my knee, my knee is in line with my hip. And then I'm going to come here, And I'm going to fold forward. Alarm will go up, I will come up. And I will sit upright. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to allow myself to give myself that opportunity just to notice the difference between my right side and my left side. I haven't worked the left side yet, but I can see that I've activated the channel of the gallbladder. Because if I look at my body, the gallbladder channel, so it's along, starts here and then runs, zigzags along my head, runs along my shoulders, down the side of my body, and ends on the front of the foot between the fourth and the fifth toe. So there's my outer channels being activated. In my liver, the liver channel is in my inner leg. So you really are going to notice how deep you worked your outer channel in doing these poses, which is the partner organ to your liver. That's your gallbladder channel. So then what I'm going to do, after I've done my, my square swan, I'm going to come here so I'm still using my right side. I'm going to start off with the pads of my fingers, so it's the same position. And I'm going to walk my hands over and I'm going to drop my forehead to the side. So I've created this nice twist. I'm opening up the side of my body. Alarm will go off after five minutes and I will come forward. My other option is if I do have a bolster, I can do my deep 
close here. I can place the bolster on the side of the hip. So I've come up from, some people call this square swan, some people call this the first part of the preparation for depots. I can come here and then I can rest my body onto the bolster, turning my cheek, cheek in the opposite direction of my knee. The lung will go up, I will gently come up. And I will come up and sit upright. This is beautiful, you'll feel the heat, you'll feel it moving through the body, stimulating the liver. So now, as I sit here for a few minutes, I'm now going to go to my opposite side. So my opposite side, I bring the bolster. And I'm sitting upright, or I'm getting myself prepared to do my opposite side. So over here, I'm going to place the left foot to the right edge of the mat. And then I'm going to drop the knee on the bolster. So I want to make sure this foot is flat so that I'm protecting my ligaments around my knee. Around here is gallbladder 34, which is a very strong point for tendons and ligaments. So I don't want to aggravate the very channel I'm trying to heal and I'm trying to release. So remember, if I place my leg just underneath where my groin is, that means I'm working through, I've, I've got either tightness in my groin or my sciatic nerve, or on an energetic level, I'm working through issues to do with power and control in specific areas of my life or in all areas of my life. If, however, I placed my right leg to the edge of the mat, then I'm trying to create space here for my pelvis, for my hips, for my liver. And this will help me move through my anger, my frustration, my aggression, my resentment, my rage, all of this that's causing heat to rise up in my upper body, to causing the, the liver to feel imbalanced, or the gallbladder to feel imbalanced. Now I can place my hands, so I'm doing upright squat. I've got my arms, or my shoulders rather at shoulder height. So my arms are bent at the elbows, my wrists are facing forward because I'm looking from the word go at the connection that my liver has with my lungs, my gallbladder has with my heart. I don't want that heat to rise and then get stuck here in my chest and stop circulation of blood through the heart and distribution of blood through the lungs. So I want to really take into account what's happening here. Remember, if I feel that it's too much for me to hold this pose, I can always use props here. I can, I can grab blankets just to put underneath my hand. I can grab blocks to put here as well. I can use the blocks on the side. I can bring them like this and use my blocks here. I can place them here if it feels it's too strong. Remember, where I place my back leg on my right side, I will do the exact same thing for my leg. So this will be three minutes. Then I'm going to go into the sleeping swan. So I'll have my block ready, my eye pillow ready, because I'm stimulating governing vessel 14.5, stimulating urinary one and urinary two here, gallbladder one, sanitar one. So I'm really activating some beautiful points. Very gently, when the alarm goes off after five minutes, I'm going to walk the foot. So be conscious how you walk the foot. So my foot was at the right edge of the mat. I'm going to walk it to the left edge of the mat. I'm going to release that left leg. Still using the left side, I'm going to come into half butterfly. So my right leg is straight, my toes are pointed up, so my stomach channel is stimulated here, my urinary channel in my right leg is stimulated at the back of my leg. So the left leg, this foot is flexed so that I protect the ligaments around my knee. And I can see here, here is gallbladder 34, a 
really strong point for my tendons and my ligaments. My inner leg is my liver, my spleen, my kidney channel. So I have a few options here. I can do half butterfly for five minutes and just fold forward over the knee. My other option, of course, is that I can place my hands inside my leg so I can do half butterfly here. And I can place, if I feel I can't go as well, I can place the block and the eye pillow here and fold forward like this. My other option, if I wanted to use my bolster to make it more restorative, I can place my bolster here and then the left knee, the left arm is bent. Right arm, the palm is faced upward and then I drop my forehead onto the bolster. So these are all my options for me to do butterfly. So I have done three minutes upright swan. I've done five minutes sleeping swan. Five minutes half butterfly. Then I'm gonna do my square pose. So I'm going to check my leg, my left leg. So you want to check that the foot is flexed and it is like a square shape. So you may, you, you will tilt guys and you may feel like one side is a lot easier to get on than the other side. And there's a reason for that. We'll tuck the right leg underneath, flex the foot. So the reason for that is we tend to be either right body people or left body people. So if I overuse my left side, I could find that that's more flexible or it's tighter. If I overuse my right side, I could find that's more flexible or it's tighter. If I am a right brain person, which means I'm left body, or a left brain person, which means I'm right body, then I will tend to overuse one side more than the other. If I'm left-handed, if I'm right-handed, that will also change it. Also the way I sleep, if I sleep more on the left side or more on the right side. So I'm gonna notice this when I do this sequence more than any other sequence. So when I come into my square pose, so I've set up my square pose, I'm going to release my forehead onto the wall. The alarm will go off after five minutes, and then what I'm going to do, I'm going to do, so some people call this pose square, square swan or preparation for depose depending on, on who's taught you this sequence. So, you're, it's the same position of your legs. You're going to check your leg. Your ankle is in line with your knee. Your knee is in line with your hip. Now check the back. My ankle is in line with my knee and my knee is at the height of my hip bone. And then I'm going to slowly come forward. I can place the eye pillow. Alarm will go off. Now, what I love about doing this pose is how much it will get me in preparation for my D pose. So with my D pose, what I can do is I can either do it with a bolster or without a bolster. So I'm here in the position, so I've done this for five minutes. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come up here, the pads of my fingers here, and I'm gonna walk my arms forward and I'm gonna drop my forehead. I can use the bolster to do this. So I'm opening up the side of my body, right? Where the gallbladder channel runs down. Stay here for five minutes. Alarm will go off. Or what I can do, if I have the bolster, I wanna make it more restorative, I have my ankle in line with my knee. I'm going to place the bolster where my hip bone is. The position of my legs is the same. I come up onto the pads of my fingers, create that twist from here, and then I'm going to walk my hands, and then I'm going to turn my head. My palms are faced upwards, so my cheek is in the opposite direction to my knee. Alarm will go off. And I'll come up. 
and I'll sit up. Rest for a few breaths. So I have done three minutes upright swan, five minutes sleeping swan, five minutes half butterfly, five minutes square, five minutes preparation for deer or square swan, or, and then five minutes deer twist, deer pose. Left side, I've done three minutes upright swan, five minutes sleeping swan, five minutes half butterfly, five minutes square pose, five minutes preparation for deer or square swan, and then the deer pose or deer twist. So then, I'm gonna come up. So after I finish both sides, between my right and left, I'm just gonna sit upright just to feel it, feel the difference. Now, between the left side, the gallbladder channel. So, the gallbladder channel starts here, zigzags all along here, runs down. I've got gallbladder 20. Here at the back of the neck is my gallbladder 20. The channel runs along my shoulders, down the side of my body, side of my legs, to where my fourth toe is. And what's interesting is that a lot of people here, especially in this region, they don't have a gallbladder. So for the rest of their lives, they'll have tension here in their shoulders. And what I found interesting was a client of mine told me a few months ago that the scientists discovered, that discovered just a few months ago that people who don't have a gallbladder have tension in their shoulders. And they will always have tension in their shoulders. Which of course in traditional Chinese medicine we know that because of the gallbladder channel. We've got gallbladder 20 here and then gallbladder 21 over here and then it runs down to the sides of the body, right? So then what I'm going to do, I'm going to give you some options for your therapeutic frog. You can grab a blanket you can place the blanket just the front of this mat. So you're using the mat horizontally. Now this is to protect your knees. So this is your setup. You can have the bolster to the side. You can have your eye pillow here ready. And then what you're going to do is you're going to come up and place your knees onto the blanket. And you're going to turn around, you're going to look at your legs so your feet are turned outwards. I'm just going to show it to you from the back. It looks like this. So your ankles are in line with your knee and your knee is in line with your hip and your feet are turned outward. So that's the position of your feet. So here is your option with your frog pose. Make sure that you have your hips in line with your knees. You're not going too far forward. You're not going too far back. You don't want to overload your knees. So from this position, I'm going to grab my eye pillow. My palms are flat. And then I'm going to release my forehead onto the eye pillow. My other option is that I can do three or four minutes right cheek where I'm placing gallbladder one sand gel one onto the eye pillow alarm will go off and then I can swap the cheeks otherwise I can just leave my forehead on the eye pillow alarm will go off I'll use my hands lift up and I will come up and sit in upright child's pose my knees are wide apart or I can sit with my knees together please don't go into tadpole or child's pose, supine child's pose or frog because so much blood ends up in the brain after you do this pose, it's incredible. Remembering that liver energy travels up. The liver not only controls the lower dantian but it controls the upper dantian, right? In yin yoga we have lower dantian, middle dantian and then we have upper dantian. The reason that the liver controls both lower and, and upper dantian is because the liver which stores the soul and creates that sense of purpose. The liver is the planner, the strategic planner. 
right? So because it stores the soul, the third eye or the pituitary gland is the eye of the soul, the all-knowing, the all-seeing eye. This is where we get the vision. This is where we get the clairvoyancy, the insight, the intuition, the psychic abilities. The more we release the liver, because the liver stores the soul, it is known as the ethereal soul, Han. We call it Han in yin yoga. And at, at 1 to 3 a.m., our Han, our soul, travels. And it travels so that when it comes back into the body in lung time, we can turn our dreams into, our, into reality. Throughout our day, our Han allows us to create strategic planning, allows us to make decisions if we're going through anything where we have to make a decision and we cannot make a decision, we're completely indecisive, that's an imbalance of our gallbladder. Your other option with your therapeutic fog is that you can do the restorative version. So I'm going to bring the bowls to here. I'm going to come up onto my knees. So my feet are turned out. My knees are as wide as possible. And then I'm going to check where the navel is, where the belly button is. And I'm going to let my pelvis hang off the bolster. So I can either place the forehead onto the bolster or like I said, you can do one cheek for a few minutes where the sand gel point, gallbladder point is there. Three or four minutes and then turn and then the cheek. Alarm will go off. I'll come up onto the pad of the fingers and I will lift up. And I will come up and I will sit up. So you can do, you can do the version without the bolster, or you can do the version with the bolster, remembering that your belly button just hangs off at the edge of the bolster. What that will allow is it'll allow the pelvis, so either way, whether you're doing the more therapeutic version of this pose, or you're doing the more restorative version of this pose, what it, it will allow is it'll allow the pelvis to relax, the hips to relax, the liver to relax. And when I allow my liver, be relaxed or to be, to be in a state of free flow where energy flows, flows freely, I then can honour my soul, honour my purpose in life. I can live out my purpose. In traditional Chinese medicine, the liver is the rebirth organ. So I sign a soul contract before I incarnate on this earth. And these are all the experiences I'm going to have, all the lessons I'm going to learn because that's my soul contract. My liver is my soul. Or the hum, the ethereal soul, houses the liver, whichever way you look at it. I then choose my parents. There's my kidneys. My parents is create the pre-karma, prenatal gene. Post-karma, postnatal gene. The postnatal gene is what I add. The prenatal gene is what I'm inheriting. So this is why I, as a soul, have chosen my parents. Then I take my first breath, which is my lungs. My spleen allows me to transform the experience that I signed up for. So if I'm going through a very difficult time in my life, the spleen will allow me to transform that. It will give me, help me develop the intellect to move out of states of fear of the future or living in the past and be right here in the present moment. My kidneys are what give me that will to act, the will to keep going or to feel defeated by what's going on. So what I have to look at is, okay, this is part of maktu, what they say maktu, this is part of my soul contract. This is what I came or I incarnated on this earth to do. This is why we choose our parents. So a liver sequence is a wonderful sequence for you to do if you feel that you are stuck. You don't know what your soul purpose is or you actually do know what your soul purpose is but you don't have the courage to go through to, to move through it to go through it because of societal conditioning remember you chose this experience on a soul level and commitment courage they are the strong attributes of the gallbladder the positive attributes of the gallbladder the strong attributes and the positive attributes of our liver is of course honoring the, the soul so I do need my secondary organ to give me the courage to commit 
to this journey that I want, to commit to what I signed up for. So this is a beautiful post for that. It allows the liver to regenerate, to create that beautiful fresh storage of blood. It moves the channels, the liver channel, the spleen channel, the kidney channel, right? So then I have the will to act. I'm not defeated. I can transform the situation and see what I can learn from it rather than live in the past. And of course, the liver will help me manifest the life that I am born to live with the courage and commitment that is required for me to live that life. Once I have done my therapeutic frog, I'm going to do what is known as supine cow face. So I'm going to grab the, the bolster. If I don't have a bolster, I can use a block. So I'm just going to show you how the arm should look when I'm lying down. So I'm just going to give you my back. So I'm inhale, raise that right arm up. I can bring that energy around to the kidneys. Bend that right arm at the elbow. The left arm, bring that around to the kidneys. Raise that up. Turn that thumb and bring that around. So that's what I'm going to be having my hands lying down. Release both arms, and obviously when I do my left side, bring that energy around to the kidneys, raise that left arm up. Bring that energy around to the kidneys. So this is the cow face position of my arms as I'm lying down. So now I'm going to come into the pose. So I'm gonna have the box to here. I'm gonna have my feet opposite ends of the mat and I'm going to be lying onto my back and then what I'm going to do with my left leg I'm going to bring it over to the right side of the bolster with my right leg I'm going to cross it over my left knee and now my right arm so if you remember what we did with the cow face I'm bending that right arm at the elbow with my left arm I'm turning that thumb and I'm bringing it around. And my chin is to the chest. I'll hold this pose for five minutes. I will release my arms. I'll have my feet opposite ends of the mat. I will lie here just for a few breaths, just noticing what I've released from my arms, what I've released from my heart and lungs. Then I'm gonna place my right foot to the left side of my bolster and then I'm going to cross my left leg over my right knee. Then I'm going to raise that left arm up and I'm going to bend that arm at the elbow. With my right arm, I'm going to bring it to shoulder height, turn the thumb down and then place that underneath my chin is towards my chest. I'm going to hold this pose for five minutes. The alarm will go off. I will release my feet opposite ends of the mat. I'll have my arms by my side. I can draw the knees together if I want or I can just release like this. I'll roll over to my right side. I'll slowly come up. Now, this is a beautiful supine cow face pose. It's such a beautiful pose for us to do when we've done so much release for the liver, so much release for our gallbladder, that we want to also consider that we don't, after we finish our sequence, we don't have all this heaviness that is sitting in our lungs and heart. So remembering that the liver is lower dantian and it's upper dantian and liver energy rises upwards. So we want the free flow to continue out of the brain, opening up the crown chakra, opening up the throat, opening up the third eye, and then finally releasing the crown chakra. It'll help us when we're doing supine cow face pose, we can feel the energy on the outer legs, we can feel the release of the, the liver channel in the inner legs, and we can feel from the arms, because my right arm is my lungs, my large intestine, my sangha, my left arm is my heart, my small intestine, and my pericardium. And when I look at the heart, the heart, the spirit of the heart is Shen, which is mind and spirit. Then I have my liver, which is Han. 
both spirit and soul need to work together, right? Because the heart is the emperor, or what I like to call the empress, but the liver is the general. So you can see how they have to come together. Why? Because the soul is what I've signed up for, but the heart is what helps me remember what I signed up for. So after I do the, cow, the supine cow face pose, I can do a beautiful, actually what we'll do, to finish off, I come and I lie down. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do what is known as sleeping beauty. So just to show you, you will only do sleeping beauty on your right side. So I'm gonna come onto the right hip, here. I'm going to make sure that I'm not to the side like this or not too far forward. I am actually on my right hip. Then I'm going to grab the bolster. I'm going to place the bolster here. Then with my left leg, I'm going to place my left knee in line with my left hip, my ankle in line with my knee. Remember, I'm still on my right hip. Then I'm going to come down here. And of course, remember sand gel one, board ladder one is here. So I'm going to rest my eye pillow just here. And with my left hand, I can just rest it on my right arm. I'm going to lie in sleeping beauty for seven minutes. I can do 10 minutes if I want. I can even do 15 minutes. When the alarm goes off, I will come, place the bolster to the side and just lie onto my back. Draw the knees together for a few breaths. So just to let you know that Ideally, we should sleep on the right side. So Sleeping Beauty is only done on the right side. It's not done on the left side. The reason that it's only done on the right side, so I've got my liver here on my right side. Left brain controls right side of the body. Right brain controls left side of the body. So my right brain will take me, because I'm lying on the right side, I'm stimulating that right brain my right brain is going to take me into that beautiful deep state of sleep and recovery because the liver re when it regenerates if i'm asleep in good element time from 11 pm to 3 am the most important time for me to be asleep that is the most yin part of my 24 hour cycle especially 1 am to 3 am it is the most yin time so if i'm awake at that time, in wood element time, in particular if I'm awake at liver time, which is 1 a.m. to 3 a.m., then I'm going to feel sluggish, I'm going to feel irritated, I'm going to feel tired, I'm going to have issues with my eyes because the liver controls eyesight, my muscles are going to be tight and contracted, I'll tear a ligament because I, you know, my ligaments are quite contracted and, and tight. It's very important that the most yin part of the 24 hour cycle, we are asleep so that we can build new cells. We can regenerate our blood. We can create fresh storage of blood. We can do our astral traveling. Let the soul travel so that when it comes back into the body at 3 a.m. at lung time, I can turn those beautiful dreams into reality. I have the courage throughout my day to plan this dream, strategically plan this dream and manifest it, right? The liver is about manifestation. I will not have issues to do with my menstrual cycle. I will be able to go through perimenopause and menopause without symptoms. So ideally, we should be sleeping on the right side. Remember also the right lung is here and the right lung is bigger than the left lung because the left lung is making room for the heart so the right lung can take me sleeping on the right side as well so it's very important to remember to sleep on your right side the only time you would sleep on your left side is if you're pregnant so that the baby can actually feel your heartbeat 
then I will do to finish off this beautiful sequence I will do restorative fish right I will roll this beautiful blanket I'm going to place this blanket here and I'm going to come and lie onto my back my legs over the bolster and I'm going to place the blanket just where the bra hooks or just underneath the breastbone. I can do the dragon arms if I want or I can place my left hand on my tummy, my right hand on my heart. My left hand is already stimulated by my heart so I bring that heart energy to my lower dantian making that beautiful connection with Shen, which is the spirit of my heart, bringing that to my beautiful little myself. My right hand, I place on my heart. Because my right hand needs that beautiful energy from my heart. I can do this, or I can do my dragon. This could be my yoga nidra if I like. I could lie in restorative fish for seven minutes. And I can see this as my yoga nidra if I wanted to. Otherwise, I can, this is a pose that I do for seven minutes. Then I roll over to my right side. I can lie either with the bolster underneath my legs or I can remove the bolster and I can just lie. So whether I choose to allow my restorative fish to be my yoga nidra or my shavasana to be my yoga nidra, I want to make sure my legs are opposite ends of my mat. I'm allowing my feet to flop out to the sides. I'm relaxing my feet. I'm relaxing my legs. My lower back is in contact with the earth. If you feel that there's a gap between the lower back and the mat, lift the bottom of the mat, bring the lower back to the mat and release. My shoulders there are shoulder height. They're nowhere near my ears. My arms, they're by my side, slightly separated from my body with my palms faced upwards in an attitude of gifting, in an attitude of receiving. Allowing my heart to be open, allowing my heart to be receptive. If your fingers are slightly cold, you're resting your body. If your palms are open, you're resting in your heart. Draw the chin towards the chest. Let's not strain the neck, let's lengthen, let's elongate the neck as we balance the thyroid glands. We balance our emotions. Eyes are gently closed. As we breathe in through the nose, we breathe out through the nose. So we lie here in Shavasana for seven minutes. Bend to the legs of the knees. Rolling over to your right side. Slowly coming up. Come up. Sitting onto the heels. Bring the palms in prayer to your heart space your lips to your fingertips. As you centre your energy before you go out into the world, take a moment to express gratitude for all that you have in your life.
hope you enjoy this beautiful liver practice, soul practice. Remember, we signed up for this for whatever reason we signed up for it. As Khalilja Brown said, your children are not your children. They come through you and not from you. Though they are with you, they belong not to you. You may house their bodies, but not their souls. For their souls belong to the house of tomorrow, which you cannot visit, not even in your dreams. You may strive to be like them, but seek not to make them like you. Thank you, everyone.